Okay, so what do we got going on here? Well, obviously we have a circle and we have a line that's intersecting this circle. And what we wanna do is find the points of intersection, i.e. we wanna find this coordinate and this coordinate. And when I'm talking about a coordinate or a point, I'm talking specifically about an XY ordered pair. So what is this location here and this location here? And you can see this problem also gives us the equation of the line. Hopefully you recognize this as a, an equation or, or a linear equation to be more precise. And x squared plus y squared equals to eight is the equation of the circle. So do you think you could do this problem? Well, hopefully you can. If you uh, can figure this thing out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But this type of problem would be appropriate for those of you that are at the Algebra 2, College Algebra, certainly the pre-calculus level uh, in terms of mathematics. But even if you're at the Algebra 1 level, don't run away from this video because this is not that difficult, at least conceptually, how to figure, uh, figure out uh, how to get the answer. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. And really what we're uh, dealing with is what we call a system of nonlinear equations. Let me back up here real quick. The topic that I'm gonna be talking about here is something that all of you should have learned back in Algebra 1 or pre-Algebra. So let's just uh, draw a little xy coordinate plane here. So here's x and here's y. So here, let's say we have a system y equals 2x plus 1. And let's say 2x minus y is equal to 7. Now, I'm not going to think about this too much and actually give you the um, uh, exact graphs to both of these. But this is a line and this is another line. Okay, so let's suppose I graph one line here and I graph another line right here. That's a terrible line. I could do better than that. Uh, let's use a different color, by the way. Let's uh, uh, hold on one second. I'm trying to get it together. All right, yeah, let's see, there we go, I'm gonna use blue. All right, so here is another line. So this would be, let's say line two, this would be line two, and this would be line one, line one. Okay, so again, we're talking about stuff that you learn as uh, even in pre-algebra, you got introduced to basic systems, all right? So the topic we're dealing with here is systems, all right, but we're dealing with what we call two variable linear systems, okay, two variable linear systems. And effectively what we're doing is, uh, conceptually, is that these systems represent lines. These are linear systems, so it's one line, another line. And if these two lines happen to cross, this point of intersection, this XY point here, would be the solution to the uh, to the system, okay? Now, of course, the lines don't have to cross and the lines can be parallel where there is no solution. But anyways, hopefully you get the general idea. But what we're talking about here again is linear systems, i.e. systems that involve a line. But what about systems that involve a circle and a line? Okay, so instead of uh, two lines, right? Let's just kind of uh, fix up our little system here. Okay, what if we had a circle and a line? Okay, well, that's our situation here. So we have a circle and then we have a line. So again, the points of intersection, if these um, two objects uh, do in fact uh, intersect, because here's the thing, I could have a circle like this and I can have my line over here where I have no points of intersection. So they may, they may not be a solution to this system. But really the topic, what I'm kind of getting at here is uh, systems of non-linear, non-linear equations. Now, even though we have a line, we do have a circle. Okay, so what if I had a circle and I had like an exponential function, right? Let's say I kind of fix this thing up, something like this, right? Again, non-linear, you're still looking for points of intersection. So uh, the, uh, the skills that you learn to solve linear systems like the substitution method and uh, linear combination method and graphing method, those type of basic techniques you can actually use to solve this problem. So anyways, uh, hopefully uh, this kind of 
will set up, uh, you, know, can, you know, how to solve this, these type of problems. It's not just, you know, in math, it's like, here, I'm going to show you how to solve this one problem. But if you don't understand the big picture, well, then you're not going to be able to apply this in a more general sense. Okay. All right. So here is our uh, equation uh, for the circle. Now, I'm not going to even get, in, get into... Uh, the equations of conic sections and circles. Just, I'm just telling you this is the equation that represents this circle. And then here we have the equation that uh, is, of course, this linear equation right there. All right, so we're looking for these two points of intersection. What can we do? Well, here's the thing. You want to be thinking about those skills that you learned in Algebra 1 or pre-algebra. And I'm going to give you a hint. Try to use the substitution method, okay? Here I have uh, two variables, x and y, and I have x and y over here. And this y is already set up for me. I have y is equal to this. So how about we substitute this y for all of this stuff right there, okay? That is the uh, uh, kind of the path you want to take. Now, if you didn't see that, uh, if you're like, oh, I was confused about how to solve this problem, you're like, oh, this makes sense. You should probably just pause this video and work out the rest of this problem. See if you can handle the algebra that goes along with this. But what are we looking for? Okay. Well, we're looking for, as our solution, we're looking for an X and a Y. Okay. And we're looking for one X and one Y that represents this point. And we're looking for another X and another Y that represents this point. Now, are these X and Y values going to be the same? No, it's impossible for them to be the same because this location is not this location, right? So we're looking for two different X values and two different Y values. So hopefully now you kind of see the big picture and now let's get into the algebra. All right, so again, what we want to do is use the substitution method. We're going to uh, replace that Y, okay? Uh, because we know y is equal to all of this, we're going to replace this y with this. And anytime you're using the substitution method, you want to use parentheses. So let's go and focus our attention over to the left-hand side here and plug in uh, this right here, 1 half x plus 1. We're going to replace this y with 1 half x plus 1. So here is our uh, equation for our circle. Now I am kind of wrote a little bit smaller here so we can kind of see what's going on. But uh, hopefully you can kind of follow what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm going to replace that y with 1 half x plus 1, and we're going to square it because this is y squared. But now I have one equation with one variable. That's what the substitution allows us. It's all in x. This, uh, I'm sorry, this equation here is all in that one variable x. So I have x squared plus all of this. And now this really comes down to your ability uh, to, you know, uh, your algebra skills and your ability to do things in algebra like multiply and square and solve quadratic equations, etc. All right, so here we go. x squared, 1 half x plus 1 squared. I multiply this by itself. I can use the FOIL technique. You should get this. If you don't know how to do any of these sub-skills, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to uh, thoroughly review um, a lot of different things in like the Algebra 1 level. So uh, I would probably direct you towards my Algebra 1 uh, course. Okay, so check that out. That will help you tremendously. I do have additional videos on all these little topics as well. All right, so let's continue to work this uh, problem out. So here I have x squared plus 1 fourth x squared plus x plus 1. So I can add at, uh, 1x squared plus uh, one fourth x squared. And of course, all of you are experts at fractions. This is the same thing as four over four. So all the x squared and x squared are um, four over four or one x squared plus one fourth x squared gives me five fourths x squared plus x uh, minus seven. Now what I did here is I subtracted eight from both sides of the equation and I'm writing this thing or I want to write this thing in standard form. Okay, and this is pretty much highest to lowest power, and you set this thing equal to zero because well, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with a quadratic equation. All right, so let's go ahead and clear away this fraction, uh, this leading uh, coefficient here, and that's just a fancy term for the coefficient or the number in front of the x squared. So let's get rid of that. I can always get rid of all the fractions by multiplying by the LCD. LCD here is 4. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 4. Now, if you didn't want to do this, that's perfectly fine. You could solve this quadratic equation using this coefficient. 
but you know that would be like more work than is necessary. Always clear fractions if you can. So when I multiply four by five fourths, you're gonna get five x squared, four times x gives me four x, four times this negative seven gives me negative 28, and four times zero is zero. Okay, so here is our uh, quadratic equation. We still don't have the solutions for this, but what do we know? When I solve for x, quadratic equations always have two solutions. Okay, so I'm going to have uh, one solution for x and another solution for x, two solutions. And remember, keep the big picture in mind. We're looking for two x values, right? We're looking for one x here and one x here. And, and because we're solving this quadratic equation, we're going to get two unique x values. That's going to represent these uh, 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 coordinates for these respective points. So this is making sense. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. Well, at least hopefully it's making sense, but let's go ahead and continue on. All right, so let's go ahead and solve 5x squared plus 4x minus 28, and we'll pick up the problem right here. Okay, so anytime you are solving any quadratic equation and you have a trinomial, always try to factor. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, so this is factorable. Now, how you, uh, this is uh, factored into this, that is a skill, okay? You have to be excellent at factoring. If you don't know how I went from here to here, you need to review factoring, all right? I would say pr probably one of the most important skills in al pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, all of algebra is your ability to factor, Okay, so anyways, you want to be able to factor, and we can factor. So we have uh, this um, trinomial equal to x minus 2 times 5x plus 14 is equal to 0. So now we could set each of these factors equal to 0. Okay, this is what we call the zero product property. And when I solve these respective equations, you get x is equal to 2, and x is equal to negative 14 over 5. Okay, so what does that mean, though? Well, uh, we just found the x-coordinates for these respective points. We got point A and point B, and uh, point A, uh, its x-coordinate uh, is going to be 2, okay? And point B, its x-coordinate its x, uh, is going to be negative 14 over 5. Now, how do we know that? Well, I'm calling, how do we know which one's A, which one's B? Well, just look here. We know that point A is in the first quadrant, okay? So it's like one, two over here. So this point, just visually speaking, uh, its X value is gonna be negative, right? So this is negative and it's gonna be negative. So we're gonna have uh, this in the third quadrant and this point will be in the first quadrant, right? This is gonna be negative and negative in terms of our X and Y and our point A here should be positive and positive. Okay, so we have our x's. Let's go get our y values now. So we'll pick up the problem right here. So how do we get y when we have solved for x? Well, we have two equations that involve both x and y. So I can either use this equation or this equation. Which one's easier to use? Well, obviously, this is the easier equation to work with. Because we are solving for y, and this is super easy. If we're solving for y, we have x. We just simply just plug in our x values here, do this number crunching, and we will get y. And let's go ahead and do that right now for these respective points. Okay, but look here. We have to do it twice because we got to plug in x when x is 2 for uh, and to get a um, the y value for that point. And then once we're done doing that, we got to plug in this x value into the same equation to get y for the other point. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. And you can see I already did the work here. When x is 2, 
Well, y will be 2. You can see the work. So that point is 2, 2. And when x is negative 14 over 5, y is equal to negative 2 fifths. Of course, you can see all the work there just to kind of double check this stuff. And that is that second uh, coordinate. Okay, so this is how you get these two points. And this would be the solution to this nonlinear system. Now, does this seem like a lot of work? Well, yes, it is a decent amount of work. Okay, I'm not going to try to lie to you and say, hey, this is an easy problem to do. Uh, it takes one, two, three. No, at this level of math, you know, and this I would say is a kind of medium level problem. Okay, when you uh, get into more advanced mathematics, some problems will take you multiple pages to do. Okay, so don't uh, feel like, man, maybe you're off track because you're doing a lot of work, you're doing a lot of writing. You're like, boy, this problem's going forever. Yes, at this level of math, sometimes these problems do take a lot of, um, uh, you know, space. That's why you never want to be too restrictive in terms of like the paper you use. Get yourself plenty of paper, be nice and neat, use pencil, and take whatever room you need to keep writing out these steps. Don't shortcut writing things down because you're trying to save space on your paper. That's definitely a big no-no. And once you're done, you should go back and look at your work and can you read the solution? Can you kind of like read it back to yourself, kind of grade yourself? Because remember, who is this work going to? Well, it's going to be going to your teacher. They're going to kind of read the story on how you solve the problem. Okay, so hopefully this video helped you out. If you're at this level of math and you need more assistance with systems or anything along these lines, I'm going to definitely suggest uh, one of three courses, either my Algebra 1 course, Algebra 2 course, uh, which, of course, is more advanced than Algebra 1, or even my pre-calculus course, okay? So it all depends. This this uh, particular problem could be on um, Algebra 2 or definitely in pre-calculus, along with much, much more uh, fun stuff in that course as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.